and we're live recording this time um, so we're still gonna do five minutes and cover a topic in this uh, short amount of time but this time I have to record it because there is no internet connection where I am right now and I will upload it as soon as possible um, today's topic is a follow-up to last week's five minute Friday where I try to separate a bit or show the difference between the breathe up and the relaxation phase. Um, the link is below in the comments or in the description. So there came in uh, quite a few good questions uh, regarding that video. So the most important one is uh, almost obviously, so when to use now which, so when do you use a breathe up and when do you use uh, a relaxation phase? So very important is also to clarify in this connection, why do people intentionally overbreathe or underbreathe as a preparation for a breath hold? So let's start there. So overbreathing is probably easier to um, follow. Why do freedivers do that? And overbreathing, also known as hyperventilation, basically means breathing more than what your body actually needs right now. So that's what we defined last week. So what happens when you do that is normally the breath gets regulated by the level of CO2 in the body and uh, the body wants to maintain a neutral level of CO2 in the blood in the end of the day. And uh, if there's more CO2 in the blood, because for example, you're jogging, you're doing any physical workout or you're nervous, then the body will automatically breathe more and more frequently to offload that excess CO2 to maintain that neutral level of CO2. Now, if you're breathing more than normal, um, if you're aware of it or not, what happens is you are breathing as if you were physically active. So you're offloading CO2. That means your level of CO2 is going down a little bit or over time it could be actually considerable and um, if you do it to the extreme you will get cramps in the extremities and you can actually uh, suffer from a blackout um, just from over breathing that would be an extreme case but that is possible so why would a free diver do that lower the co2 level before a breath hold well Obviously, during a breath hold, then um, the CO2 will come up and then go beyond the normal level. And that's when we start to feel CO2. And at a certain level, most uh, free divers will also get contractions from an elevated level of CO2. So simply offloading CO2 before a breath hold uh, gives you more time until you get contractions or even a sensation of elevated CO2. That's the sunny side of the story. The not so um, uh, good side, the flip side of this is that CO2 is needed for the body to um, activate what we call the mammalian dive response, also uh, sometimes called the mammalian dive reflex, which basically um, tells the body, hey, you are um, holding your breath, you should switch into energy conservation mode and uh, lower your heartbeat, lower your uh, use of oxygen and uh, all the, the, the phenomenon, the consequences that we called together a um, mammalian dive response kick in because of elevated CO2. And this will not be triggered as well, or if at all, if you start your breath hold with a lowered um, CO2. The second flip side is we use CO2 as our timer. So the, the amount of CO2 is, is quite easy to gauge uh, as an individual experience and you train yourself to react on that. So when the CO2 feels like this or like that, then you will um, know, okay, it's time to stop uh, your breath hold. And if you start that breath hold already with a extremely low CO2 level, you will not get this information of elevated CO2 and combine that with the weaker or non-existent um, dive reflex or response, um, still using still using a lot of oxygen in that manner, uh, might lead to a blackout. Hence, we are not teaching hyperventilation as a preparation of a breath hold at all in uh, recreation levels. Checking the time, we will not make it five minutes again this time. Um, so. It is, however, used in top level uh, free diving when we are uh, talking about competitive free diving, mainly competitive static breath holds. So athletes do um, develop a personal 
style, a personal program that they systematically offload a certain amount of CO2 before starting the breath hold. That's a thing that doesn't happen from one day to the next. It's a, a program that you develop for yourself, which then works for you as you progress. So you adjust it, you adjust it, you adjust it. You cannot just go from um, relaxation uh, phase, breathing, so completely relaxed to hyperventilation and expect um, a good result or being a safe free day. We're still in that. So with a controlled um, reduction of the CO2 level over months, if not years, um, benefits can be achieved because in the same time, these athletes also will get um, the benefits of the mammalian dive response triggered not only by CO2, but also over time you actually trigger such uh, reactions and uh, energy consumption uh, um, effects just by a mental preparation, mental training. So that would be the reason why some choose to use overbreathing or hyperventilation. Now the flip side is why would someone consciously underbreathe, which means they will not start their, bre their breath hold with a neutral level of a breath hold, but with a, uh, with a neutral level of CO2, but with an elevated uh, level of CO2. Why would you do that? Well, the answer is already partially given in the first uh, part of this um, short video. When you start your CO2 already with an elevated level of CO2, the mammalian dive response will kick in faster and maybe even harder. So the uh, oxygen cons uh, conserving effects will come in earlier and might be stronger. So over time in a deep dive, mainly this is uh, tested and being used, um, it might be harder to do the dive because you need a very high tolerance to CO2. You will start the dive already with elevated CO2. On the other hand, through the uh, conservation of oxygen through the strong reaction of the body to this elevated CO2 in a long dive, so let's say a deep free immersion dive which can take four minutes, you will save oxygen and you will surface in a clearer uh, mental state than if you would have done uh, with normal ventilation or even more so um, with hyperventilation. So that's a topic that has only come up in the last few years, I would say, to experiment with hyper, uh, with hypo ventilation before dives. This is a safe thing to do. So if you want to experiment with something uh, in your breathing, explore also, and uh, in the first place, hypo ventilation. As always, uh, when you do that in water, and even if it's just a bathtub, you need someone to body you. There's no exception to that rule. However, if you do it on your bed, <coughs> it is safe to a certain degree, but most uh, the safest position would be to do it sitting up. Simply because if you overdo these uh, experiments, you might black out. And if that happens while you are um, on your back, on your bed, uh, the tongue can collapse and block your airways. If you do that sitting up, you will fall sideways, most likely if you black out, and that shouldn't be then uh, such a big problem, you will simply uh, restart breathing and regain consciousness over time. So that was way longer um, than the five minutes, but hey, we always try. Eight minutes 50, not too bad again. So thank you very much for all your questions uh, that you uh, shot at me since the last video. Keep them coming. Um, next Friday, we will probably pick up a new topic then. So thank you very much for your attention and I'll see you soon.